Continuing on. In current trials of anti-inflammatory drug, I know we have few nurses in the class, probably they pronounce this better than me. Uh, adults and adults and allergy patients were randomly selected, divided into two groups. Some patients were given 500 MCG of this drug, but some patients received a placebo. In 2,103 patients who reached who received this medication, 500 and 20 reported bloody nose as a side effect of the 6,000 of the 1,671 patients who received placebo 368 reported bloody nose as a side effect is there a significant evidence to conclude that the proportion of this medication users who experience bloody noses as a side effect is greater than. So the null hypothesis will claim those proportions are the same, no difference. The claim are those bigger than. So if I work out the numbers, P1 hat is. P1 hat is 520 divided by 2103. You could leave it like that if you want. You could approximate it to like three decimal places. So Q1 star will be, Q, Q1 hat will be 1 minus that, which is 0 0.753. And if I work out P2 hat, that will be 368 divided by 1671. And if I put that in my calculator, that will be 2, 2, Q2 hat will be 78, approximately. Now, P bar I need X1 plus X2. X1 was 520 plus 368 divided by 2103 plus 1671. P1 bar turns out to be 0 0.235, so Q bar is 0 0.765. And I'm going to do both again. Here they want us to do the test statistics, Z equal P1 minus P2 minus, this is going to be 0 because if we subtract those with the assumption that they're equal, over the square root of P bar Q bar over N1 plus P bar Q bar over N2. And let me find that. 0 0.247 minus 0 0.22 divided by the square root. And we're going to fill in the blanks. We got this to be 0 0.235. That doesn't look like a nice 2. There we go. times 0 0.765 divided by n1, n1 was 2103 minus a plus the same number the second was 1671 make sure to extend that plug this in the calculator and I'll get roughly 1.94 so either way if I want to use the P test, the, the p value, the probability that z is greater than 1.94 is distribution. We're going to go for normal CDF. We're going to go from, we said 1.94, upper is 1. E to the 99, tell me what that is, and that turns out to be 
as we see two point six percent chance of that happening six one percent did they give us an alpha five percent I'll reject they want alpha to be one percent so this is greater than so fail to reject so again if they wouldn't have said anything, we would have said 2.66% chance. That's very hard to happen, you know. That's only 2.6%. Here, the same. Let 1% be unusual. If I want to use the critical region, I want to take this area, the rejection region, to be 1%. And I'm going to go to my calculator and use inverse normal distribution. We want an area of 0 0.01 to the right. The cutoff region is 2.37. 2.37 is the cutoff region. 2.33. Where did the 7 come from? 2.33. And do we notice that 1.94, if this is 0, doesn't fall in there so we fail to reject the null hypothesis what does that mean that means the claim is asking if it's bigger it's not supporting it seems they are the same according to the sample so our conclusion so we fail to reject the null hypothesis Our conclusion, there is not enough sample significant evidence, significant to support the claim. And once you get to the word claim, you could restate exactly what it says, that the, you add the word true. And if you don't, it's not a big deal, but the true proportion of Inf Inflamax users who experience Bloody noises as a side effect is greater than the true proportion in the placebo. That's it. Now there is a test, we try to limit the test because you can only remember as much. The last portion of this lesson talks about confidence interval. Well, for difference of proportion, you take the difference minus the error and the difference plus the error. Where the error is Z sub alpha over 2 and P1, Q1 over N1, P2, Q2 over N2 pretty much straightforward now this is the idea if zero is in the interval then that would mean that they are the same if zero is not the interval that would mean they are different if zero is the interval that means the difference is there so if you want to use that confidence interval trick this is how it works a study was conducted to test the effectiveness of a uh, sweatener called, I don't know how to pronounce that, Zeratol, I guess, in preventing ear infection in preschool children in randomized experience, 159 preschool children took five daily doses and 46 got an ear infection. Oh, 
uh, during the first three months of the study. Meanwhile, 165 children took five daily poses of placebo syrup and 68 of these children got an ear infection during the first study, the same study. Now, construct a 90% confidence interval for the difference of proportion that got ear infection for the control group. All right, so find the critical, find the point estimate. The difference between them, well, P1 hat minus P2 hat is, and what is that? 159. 46 divided by 159 minus 68 divided by 165 which is if you plug in a calculator negative 0 0.213 if I work these out p1 hat turns out to be 46 over 159 that is 0 0.289 and p2 hat turns out to be 68 over 165. P2 hat turns out to be 0 0.412. So Q1 hat is 711 and Q2 hat is 0 0.588. All right, <clears throat> now we want to construct an interval z sub alpha over 2. Well, the way we do this, we say, uh, what did they say? 90% confidence interval. So 5% below, 5% above. This is 90%. So if I use my calculator and figure out what z sub alpha over 2 is, I will get inverse normal distribution. We want 0 0.90 and a center. 1.6 for there. So now Find the margin of error. The margin of error they said was z sub alpha over 2, the square root of p1 q1 divided by n1 plus p2 q2 divided by n2. We got this to be 1.64, the square root. p1 was 0 0.289 times 0 0.711 divided by n1, that was 100. And 59 plus Q2 was 0 0.412 times 0 0.588 divided by 165. If I plug this, I'll get 0 0.086. That's my error. Now construct a confidence interval. A confidence interval will be P1 minus P2 hat plus or minus E that would be a negative 0 0.123 plus or minus 0 0.086 so the interval would be negative 0 0.209 and negative 0 0.032 now this is how we will conclude uh, v7 does it appear that the sweetener is effective at reducing ear infection well yes it is it appears that it helps uh, it's the thinner one helps reduce ear infection since zero since zero is not in the interval
So if zero is in the interval, we say, well, then they're the same because zero is in there. Since zero is not in that interval, that means that medication made it. 